All right, hey guys. So I get a lot of questions uh, pretty frequently about a lot of the different types of DIY equipment that I work with in my uh, my live pulse coder performances. And so I thought I would start making some videos that demonstrate how some of these types of things work and then include some information that uh, and some resources for you guys if you're interested in wanting to design some of your own. So uh, first thing that I thought I'd go over, one of my favorites is my DIY spring reverb unit. Uh, it's made up of two components. One is the uh, the drive unit, that is the, uh, the electronics inside of here, and I'll go over that in just a little bit. And then I've got the spring reverb tank. The spring reverb tank is just literally a spring inside of here that you can send audio through to give it that springy, wet, reverb type of sound. This one in particular is from, I don't know if you can read that, an old Hammond organ. So it sounds uh, absolutely fantastic, an old tone wheel Hammond organ. So what I have here, the basics that I got for this circuit, I actually found um, a schematic on a um, Tape Op magazine. I've got the, uh, the link to that in the, uh, the description below if you want to check it out. I've modified this in a different way, so it's not exactly following that same schematic, but it's generally the same approach. So the basics of what it is, is you have a signal coming in. In this case, I'm using my TR-09 as my signal source. It's got some nice claps and stuff like that that'll work really well for this. Um, uh, and it goes into an amplifier, a power amplifier. The power amplifier is actually what drives the spring in order to send the audio through it because you have to really, really beef it up in order for to really do anything. This is not the one that was suggested in the schematic I uh, that I found online. This one is the um, um, is a 15 watt uh, power amplifier that was just left over from a kit from one of my students. So I decided to hack it and uh, implement it into this setup. So it's um, um, totally way more power than actually needs to be, but it just happened to be what I have on hand. So it works pretty well. Um, uh, and then this other circuitry over here has got some uh, reamplification, the preamplification that comes after the spring. So it goes through the spring, it comes back out and goes back through this preamplification. So the basics of how this thing works if I plug it in here, here's my um, power supply, 12 volt power supply. And then I have got my send to the spring, which is coming from the power amplifier. It goes to the spring right here. And then I have got coming from the spring, going back into here, which then goes through a couple op amps in order to be reamplified up into some close to line level. So I've added a couple features into here. I've got a wet mix and a dry mix, which is good for if ever I'm using it just um, as a series device. Otherwise, if I'm using it as a uh, send, I can just turn up the wet. But then I've also added a drive right here. This is something that I added myself that falls outside of the schematic that I found. It is a fuzz drive that's going before uh, the power amplifier. So it's a fuzz that drives the reverb. So it's before the reverb. Sometimes it sounds kind of cool to add something like that to it. So I have got my output right here and my input coming from my TR09 and my output's going to my loudspeaker. So it's turned on and if I play this and just turn up the dry output. There's the TR09. If I solo, let's say, just the claps and snares, because that'll sound good to the spring reverb. So if I just turn up the wet and just touch the spring without sending anything through it, you see you can hear the spring coming through. All right, sounds really, really nice. Now, if I play this through it, Boingy, springy, classic uh, spring reverb sound. Now, if I mix this where I have the dry and I mix in a little bit of the wet, you get a really nice reverb sound. And if I add in something big, let's say for example, if I add a kick drum. Thunderous, so this is dry. And here's who the reverb. So as an example of then what the drive does, if I just pull up the wet, 
I turn up the drive. See, it just gives it more kick. Which can sometimes sound kind of nice. Here's with the drive. If I add in clap and snare back into it. So, it's a pretty nice unit. I typically use it as a send whenever I'm working in uh, my live performances. So I have a MIDI controller that I send to. I'm uh, utilizing a DAW, send it out to here, and then return back through my audio interface before it goes to my main output, which um, um, it's gonna be a really nice feature. So I can take almost any sound I want, send it to this just to add a big massive swell to it or something like that if I want to. So yeah, I've got the um, uh, information for the um, for the schematic of where I found this, uh, where I based this schematic off of uh, the um, the Tape Op magazine article, in the uh, the information below. If you want to check it out, otherwise, let me know if you got any questions.